Today we're going to be having a look at how to make a bracket like this. It looks pretty straightforward. Um, we've got a couple of countersink holes there and a rib with an angle bracket. So we're going to have a look at how this all comes together and we're going to be working off of a technical drawing that I will show you soon. So let's get started and see how you do. We're just going to have a look at our technical drawing. If I go over into this tab, you can see there's our isometric view and it's a, it's a right angle bracket with a rib and then mounting holes. Um, so let's take a look at the technical drawing. From the top view we can see from the front to the back, that's this point to that bottom corner is 50 millimeters, and we can see from the front view it's also 50 millimeters from that bottom point to the top point and it's got a 10 millimeter edge. So we're going to start off by drawing that piece and extruding it away and that extrude goes to 100 millimeters. So let's get started with that. I'll draw this on the front plane and I will do this by using rectangles so it's 10 millimeters up by 50 millimeters, I think. Let me double check that. So 10 millimeters up by 50 millimeters deep. And then we'll have the same size rectangle starting at this corner. Uh, so this will be 50 and 10. Now I can push T to trim. And we'll see now that this line is not constrained, it's not blue. So I'm going to just dimension that to 10 millimeters away from there. Now we can see that our drawing is constrained. Okay, so we're on our front plane here. Now we're going to do our extrude. I'm going to extrude this a total of 100 millimeters. And if we look at that, we've got the, the basic structure of our drawing. So if we compare it to the drawing, we've got the square bracket part. Now we need to put in the rib and the holes with the countersink. Okay, <coughs> so we'll start off with the rib. You can see the rib is in the center. So it's We'll draw a line right in the center and set a rib to be 10 millimeters wide. So we'll find this center point. Um, if this plane is the front, we can go construct a plane off of this plane and at 50 millimeters we'll be in the center. So now we've got a plane projecting through the center of this component. So we're just going to draw a line from that point down to that point. So let's create a sketch on this plane. If you want, you can click slice and I'll cut it at the level of the plane. Uh, I'll just push P because I want to project this geometry, that corner point, that corner point. Okay. And then we'll draw a line between the two points. Escape the line tool. <coughs> So there we've got our line that we're going to create our rib off of. You can see it's just a line in space. So we're going to go create, select rib tool, and then we'll select this line. We're going to put in a dimension of 10 millimeters. You can see this rib is in the wrong place though. That's not going to help us at all. So over here is flip direction. We'll click flip direction. And we can see that it's now joined to that component and the 10 millimeter is five on either side of our line. So there's our rib. What's next? Going to our drawing, we can zoom in. You can see it's the same top and bottom. So I'm just going to zoom in on our top here, or perhaps the bottom because it shows you the angles of the taper. So once we've done these holes straight down, we'll put a taper on it. Uh, let's start 
with this set of holes. Uh, it's a 10 millimeter diameter, 20 millimeters from this top, so it's in the middle of that face, 22.5 away from the rib, so that's the middle of that face. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to draw 10 millimeter circles on this plane, so create sketch on this plane, I'm going to flip this. So I need to now find the center of this plane. So I'm going to push P. Okay, so it's projected. Now I'll be able to dimension against this geometry. The center diameter circle, doesn't really matter where you go, but if you move it around you can find more or less the center and we want 10 millimeters. So now I'll dimension it against this point. That was 22.5. You could also go, um, so 22.5 will get us there. We could also say it was half the distance of 45. So 45 divided by 2, it gives us the same answer. Now we'll dimension against the bottom line. That distance is 20, so there it is fully constrained. We'll repeat that step over here. P for project. I want to project this surface so I can dimension. I'll create my center point circle 10 millimeters I've intentionally drawn it off so you can see how it adjusts it when we dimension it so dimension from that point to that point that was 45 divided by 2 so now it's centered along that plane and to the bottom line that is going to be 20 or 40 divided by 2 so we can see now they're in line and they're fully constrained so we can finish the sketch. Now we're going to extrude these. So I'll click extrude command, select the two profiles, and we want them going negative 10 because they're going through. So either you can say negative 10 because we know it's 10 millimeters thick, or you can select the distance extend type to object and we'll select this face. There we can see it's made our holes straight through and we're using cut. So when I click OK, there we've got our holes. Now we're going to repeat this step on that face and then we will do our tapers. So I'll draw a sketch on this face, it's going to flip it over for me and again project, OK, center diameter circle, oh, I didn't dimension that one, we want it 10 and then we will dimension from the top that is 40 over 2 or 20 and from the side that is 45 over 2 there it's centered let's repeat it on this one project ok c for circle 10 millimeters d for dimension tool to the top line we can see there we wanted 40 over 2 or 20, really doesn't matter which way you do it. And then to the side there, we'll go 45 over 2. There it's fully constrained. We'll finish the sketch. Again, we'll go to extrude. We'll select the two faces. Want them going that way, distance to object. And we'll select the face at the back cut so we've got our more or less what we're looking for let's just go back into this drawing we can see there's a taper on this um, on this section here where it's been countersunk so that's three moles by 45 degrees so that would mean the distance it goes in is equal to the distance around the edge so if I choose chamfer I can select all four of these and it's three millimeters so I'll select three so it's three millimeters deep by three millimeters wide so that means it's at a 45 degree angle click OK and there we have our sketch so if you have a look at that that is exactly the same as what we have here in our technical drawing
you can see we've got our countersunk holes, our holes straight through, as well as the rib. So there's our drawing. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. Uh, and you can get alerted to any new content that I bring out. I'll be doing quite a few videos in the coming weeks on basic uh, Fusion 360 tools and functions and how to create basic shapes. Just giving you a bit of a better understanding of the capabilities of Fusion and possibly how to read technical drawings. So until next time, 